hello friends i am dr vivek today i am going to discuss about an important theory a little theory called reader response theory this is the theory we are going to discuss let's get started uh reader response theory uh, is a very important theory in literary in literature it's regarded as a very important theory but who this reader is in the reader response theory reader is important right so who this reader is that is the important question that who is this reader is whom you are saying that reader is important but the who this reader is reader can be a ordinary reader or a highly sensitive or educated reader with a proper knowledge of the background or a virtual reader that is imagined by the author or an ideal reader with perfect insights but uh, who this reader is who would you would say that uh, the criticism of the reader which reader you would regard uh, as uh, the response of the reader response theory Umberto, Umberto Eco's book, very important book, The Role of the Reader, written in 1979, points out that all texts do not invite the same kind of reaction and collaboration even in one kind of reader. Means uh, if, uh, if you talking about the responses of the reader, the in one kind of reader, would not give you the same kind of reference uh, if you ask them after in a different time, in different situations. So which response you would regard as uh, the response of the reader response, reader's response. And these are the, some of the important writers we are going to discuss in reader response theory. Hen Robert Joss is one of the important uh, writers of reader response theory. Joss is a supporter of reception theory. It means what appeals to one generation of the reader at a given period may not interest the reader to the same to the some other period. Means uh, if uh, you are taking the responses of, uh, of the reader in reader response theory, in the reception theory, who is the supporter, uh, uh, Han Robert Joss is the supporter of read, uh, reception theory. Reception theory says that uh, that in a one period of time, you will take the response of one kind of reader. Then if you take the same kind of reader in another period of time, you will get a different kind of experience that we have already talked about. So this is a very important question here in reader response theory that you will find a different kind of reaction uh, in a different period of time. So you, he says that, and uh, Robert Jaw says that no verse is universal. Uh, now the second uh, important writer is Stanley Fish. In reader response theory, the second writer is Stanley Fish. Stanley Fish is an American critic who has propounded the approach called affective stylistics. Uh, Fish is, has given the notion of interpretive community and believes that majority of opinion is probably right. According to Stanley Fish, he, he developed the interpretive community and interpretive community you'll find uh, that he says that uh, a majority of opinion is always right is probably probably right so he argues that there is more stability in interpretation or if the reader belong to the same interpretive community so he says that uh, if uh, there is more stability in interpretation if you uh, if you taking the responses of the reader of the same interpretive community you'll find a more stable responses. So interpretive community, uh, Stanley Fish talk about effective, effective stylistics, Stanley Fish talks about. 
Now, Wolfgang Eicher. Wolfgang Eicher is also a very important in reader response theory. Eicher makes a distinction between an implied reader and the actual reader. There are two kinds of reader, implied reader, supposed imagined reader, or the actual reader. Implied reading, one of the important books, uh, he talks about this thing, the implied reader and actual reader in his book called The Implied, implied Reading in 1974 and The Act of Reading 1978. According to Eicher, the text is an object without perceiving subject and the reader is guided to fill in the gaps. Wolfgang Eicher says that readers... Uh, uh, aim is to uh, fill the gaps. Gap filling is the one of the one of the important uh, uh, target or aim of the reader when he is giving the responses. Aisha's notion of reading is gap filling, and gap filling is pro produced by the reader's movement through the text. While he is going through the reader, going through the text, uh, the responses. Uh, of the reader is uh, is the gap filling. In Aisha's view, reading is a dynamic tension between the reader's expectation and schematic schematic uh, uh, instruction of the text for meaning production. So there is a dynamic tension when the reader reads uh, a work of literature. It has a tension. Uh, between the reader's expectation, the reader is expecting something from the text, and the scheme which the instructions uh, the text uh, uh, he finds while reading a text. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is what the Wolfgang Weiser says in his uh, uh, in his response to the reader response theory. So uh, these. Uh, things are there in the reader response theory. Uh, here, they, they, the center point is uh, a reader. A reader is important. Some texts, some theories says the, the writer is important. Some says uh, text is important. Uh, the writer is important. But uh, in reader response theory, the, 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 the reader who is reading the text is so important. So what he thinks, what he gives the response of the text that is more important. So this is all based on the reader's point of view and reader's thinking. This is all about reader response theory. Thanks for listening this video. Thanks for listening.